Just going to take a look at this real quick, but welcome everyone then to game number one of the series, Jordan versus Pars, the last qualifier set. Probably going to switch Pars over to the red color, just so that it's a little bit easier to tell the players apart. And yeah, Jordan is playing up in the north with Tatters, Pars is playing down the south with the Britons. You're going to fast forward over here because they, uh, they did go into the game. A few moments ago, apparently, probably when I was just taking my bathroom break, but we're good, right? We are going to catch up and it's all going to be alright. So Jordan, with this civilization, he's gonna get 25% higher attack when fighting from a higher elevation. He's gonna get free thumb ring, free Parthian tactics with the titles as well. And then on top of that, we see for this civilization. But he gets 50% extra food from Herdables, which makes sense on a map like this. There is a lot to be had in terms of Herdables. You have a lot of cows around the map. And then uh, for every TC that they build, starting with uh, the castle age onwards, they are going to get two additional sheep underneath the TC. For the team bonus, status will have two extra line of sight on Cavalry Archer, type units, and Bars on the other hand, playing with uh, Britons. We'll get 25% faster working shepherds he's going to have a 50 percent wood discount on tcs starting in the castle age in addition to one and two extra range on foot archer units in the castle imperial ages except for skirmisher units and then the imperial uh actually sorry then the team bonus is going to be 20 percent faster working archer range so we can go back down to one x playback speed because bars is already starting to put some pressure up he's got the militia forward and jordan knows about it he's gone for the walls right away Here we go. Jun's defense has been good so far. I don't know if you can hear that, probably is a little bit too faint for you to, or for the microphone to pick it up, but it's, it's raining! It's raining quite hard right now. <laughs> the summer storms, and uh, I, I don't know if, if you'll be able to hear it, but I love it. On the other hand, it's kind of risky, right? If I just drop, my stream drops, all of a sudden, you know that it's because of the, because of the rain. So far, Bars has been unable to get much of anything done for than Jordan. Jordan's looking good. Beautiful. Very good defense for Jordan. Won't be able to be putting any pressure anytime soon, but he's been able to prevent the militias from getting much of anything done over here, and eventually they are going down. Yes, sir. There we go. The bars get loom. Bars got it. Pretty standard. Build over here from bars. Nothing out of the ordinary. Jordan is going for uh, fletching himself. He's got some skirmishers. He's been used to defend himself for the most part. Now he's going to try and send these for me while bars is going for more archers for it. He's not going for any extra units though. It seems like from this point onwards, bars is going to try to play for the castle age while. No, he's going for more archers. was probably just a matter of not having enough gold. But he's not having any skirmishers though. That is what kind of threw me off. Because if he was going to commit to military production, he probably would have wanted to add a few skirmishers into the mix, not just go for pure archers, as Jordan won't really struggle to defend against us too much by just going for a few scams, right? So here comes Bars. For the time being, there's going to be archers available to Jordan to defend himself with. Two archers going down right away! And the skirmishers 
They are close in the distance right now. There we are. So Bars is getting pushed back in. Still no skirms for Bars whatsoever. There is a downside of going for some skirmishers though. And uh, Jordan's going to be feeling that, right? And that is the fact that they're going to be using uh, food in addition to the villagers. Also for skirmisher creation. So that means that Bars is just to go for archers over here. And villagers, he should be the first one to click out to the castle each. We'll see. Still collecting from the last cow, I think. Yeah. 25% faster for the Britons. I think he found everything that he needed to find, right? Yeah, yeah, for the most part. He's done a good job. And Jordan. Jordan's about to get completely walled off. There's only a few tiles open over here that shouldn't be too difficult to connect even with a single villager and he's gonna be fine. And from this point onwards, both guys will just try and make a play for the castle age with Jordan. Looking a little bit better right now compared to Bars for resources, especially in the gold department. Bars does have a few extra food workers. He does have a little bit of extra food right now. So he might actually be able to Look out to the castle each a little bit earlier if he can balance his uh, goal situation. Meanwhile, Jordan on the other hand. Yeah, Jordan's got a little bit too much goal over here. Macro has not been on point. But it's not too bad. And Bars? Bars is in the market right now to try and rush the castle each. And he's on his way up. Jordan will be behind by about 10 seconds or so. It's not going to be a massive lead. Certainly could have been a little bit quicker if he had the market up already. It's not too bad, and in the end, both players are going up at pretty comparable times. What do you expect once we get to the castle? Each? Well, Tatars, getting free thumb ring is fantastic. Their archers are going to be better than the Briton archers when they close the gap. Otherwise, the crossbows from Britons will get extra range compared to Jordans. But if you're unable to take advantage of the, the extra range from the Britons, you won't be able to do much of anything. With those archers, right? So it can be good for for Jordan. It can potentially make a play for even step lancers. Could be good against archer units. This is a map where the Tatars not only get an advantage by having extra food income from the herd of wolves, but also because of the way the map generates and the ridge alongside the edges, right, surrounding the outcrops. There's always going to be a fallback point for the Tatters to try and fight on. And obviously Bars is going to have to be wary of that. And he's going to try and prevent that. Right now. It doesn't seem like Jordan's going for much of anything other than just a few skirmishers. And Bars on the other hand. He's got still extra archers coming out. He's going for full crossbowman play over here. He's got the one stable to go for a few knights here and there. So you can counter the skirmishers, right? And it's just going to commit to crossbows. Alright. The upgrades are coming in. Bucking arrow and crossbowman for bars. Jordan, bucking arrow and elite skirmishers. Second TC is on the way for Jordan on the left hand side of cropping. Meanwhile, the right hand side bars is going to get the second TC up himself. And right now, both players seem to be kind of mimicking each other. Except for the specifics about the army composition. But here comes bars. He's got 13 archers. Going out of his base, he's got four archers, four already. One very low HP, so it's got to be respectful of uh, Jordan's defense over here. But here come the archers. I turn on the way as well from boss, remember, so that he can fight the skirmishers off. Their TC is coming up for Jordan. And we don't have a, a third TC coming up yet for boss. Low HP. <laughs> Archer from boss getting away with a little bit too much damage over here. He won't be able to get a villager down, but anyway. It's fine. Let's see. Yep. Not much of anything over here either for Mr. 
Jordan. Does he have the pressure coming up anytime soon in bars? Their DC is gonna start falling behind in work account. He's going to stick to two TCs in archers. He's gotta go for a four siege workshop, and right now I don't see a villager moving on. He doesn't go for it, then the crossbows and knights won't be strong enough to get too much damage around Jordan. Meanwhile, Jordan. But Skimmers alone is never gonna be fighting uh or, or going offensively, rather, right? It's going to be playing for defense. Well, that's one village going down really for Jordan Bars. He's going to find the second villager kill in that one. The villager goes down right now from Jordan and Boris has done a little bit of extra damage over here by bringing a few extra crossbows to his right hand side push. Left hand side, he's got the heals, gotta be careful! The extra range he's not making use of. But he's bringing the knights over and those skirmishes are going down! Boris gotta turn around though and go straight back to the economy from Jordan. What is he going to do? You know, if he can keep the TC idle over here, the villager's idle. That'd be already fantastic for... For Barras. 30 is on the way right now for him, and he's behind already by about 3 villagers, maybe not too much. But yeah. There we go. Forty C now on the way for bars. Fifty C on the way for bars. Okay, Jordan. It's time to make a switch into cavalry archers right now. The better unit for the Tatars for sure, especially after you get like silk armor, can be very good. Extra line aside for these guys too. He's going to run into the TC, but I don't think he'll be able to deny this one, will he? But we'll see. Yeah, it's it's just not Yay. not good enough damage. And Bars is unicorn gel is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And he saves the weak villager as well. Wow, well done. Well done. So earlier, the general was collecting stone quite heavily on the left-hand side DC, and now uh, he's managed to get enough stone to get a castle up, so he's going to do so. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side... Bars is just fine with three PCs over there. He's going to be just fine against Jordan's cavalry archers. Not enough range for these guys to do much of anything. And the knights from Bars are roaming around still. Now, these are Breton knights. Nothing you're going to really be sticking to. Nothing you're really going to be banking on for doing damage. And the game is going to stabilize. From this point onwards, both guys. Well, let's just play for economy. For the most part, and potentially for the Imperial Age as well. And given the fact that the game is stabilizing... This is a great, great opportunity for me to get my tea. <laughs> so it's actually the poor song. I'm having Earl Grey today. Yes. about that man it's been a year since the last time that I was able to have some Earl Grey love it <laughs> got 
Gus is coming out for Pyros over here. At the same time, Sterling was trying to get the push going with the Cavalry Archers. That is not a lot of CA, so these knights could potentially take care of those units, but they are trying to go after the Skirmishers first, so the Crosses will take care of the Cavalry Archers. He'll be able to get the, the castle up in the end. Should be able to anyway, but a general place is Carlos Ryan might actually be able to get some of the villagers down, even though he's not gonna be able to deny the castle full stop. Can delete, or at the very least make it an expensive endeavor for for Barz right. And here the control from the Polish player over here is so good. Doesn't now lose in a few villagers, mind you. Jordan has ballistics right now, so the castle. The castle is getting the nod for the time being, and you know what? I was not expecting this to be the case, but now Jordan's going for a castle himself. He's going for a force siege workshop on the left hand side. Villager count might be higher for Bars right now, but he's got a bunch of villagers garrison inside the DC over here enough so to compensate for the villager lead against Jordan right and wow. Jordan's getting away with this. He's got the castle coming out, the siege workshop already came up. You gotta wonder if Jordan's gonna try and make a play for ramps over here perhaps? Got a good amount of cavalry archers already. Do you know if Manganils will be the way to go? Rams feels like the best choice to me, and he's going for Rams. Bars. This is going for a defensive castle on the right hand side. He's going for yet another castle. Back of his base. On the left hand side. Lord smiles again. Did not come at a price of a bunch of villages, but this one, my, this one, my, we have ballistics for Jordan, and that is a lot of villagers from Bars. Going down to the Cavalry Archers, that's gonna be the single castle denied. Two castles denied right away. Oh boy. This is so much worse for Bars than I thought it was going to be. I thought for sure he's able to finish this one, right? It seemed that he had enough knives to take the skirmishers down and potentially push or at the very least keep the carry archers at bay. He wasn't able to get that one up. He wasn't able to get this one up. Now the rafts are coming in from Jordan. Lord Smiles intensifies. <laughs> Double down castle and uh, notice that Jordan's taking his sweet time to get the push going. He's going after the first castle. Then he's going for the TC as opposed to the second castle. Now Jordan on his way to the Imperial Age. Now Bars clicked up already a while ago. So he does have currently a minute and nine second head start to the Imperial Age compared to Jordan, but what will he do? He's got the only castle up on the right hand side all the way to the other side of the map. If he wants to go for trebuchets to fight Jordan's castle off over here, it's going to take forever for a trebuchet to go across the map. The Embarrass manages to get a castle out though, this is much better. He's got Lombos on the way. And he ends up deleting the foundation. Gets little to no stone back. As a matter of fact, I'm not really sure if he actually deleted this one, did he? Nope, he didn't delete it. He actually lost whatever stone was remaining over there. To be fair, that was not a whole lot. Generally, so many cavalry archers died too. Yes. So it's not too bad for Bars, overall population still favoring the red player. He does get to the Imperial Age early, right? So we see a trebuchet right away. I'll try to take the castle down from Jordan. But he's now making a play for um, Keshek. Castles on the way now for Bars. It's quite clear the intent over here is to go for Lombos if you can uh, if you can help it, of course. Here we are.
Beautiful quick walls coming in from Varls around the trebuchets. Preventing the Keshiks from getting to the tray, but at the very least one of them, the other one is going to be still uh, accessible, right? Yet another castle on the right hand side. It's gonna be the fifth castle for Bars. He is going for Lombos. He's going for Elite Lombo, man. Jordan's going for Elite Keshik. He's got it right now. Got two trebuchets from Jordan. Meanwhile, Bars is only on one for the time being. And what is Jordan doing over here? Is he, is he just having fun uh, dodging the arrows? Because literally there is nothing else over here for the... I guess that the ram maybe? Yeah, it was trying to protect the ram perhaps. But anyway. Keshik's coming over trying to prevent the villagers from repairing the castle. will be successful, so the castle's going down. Only four castles left. Four bars. Big push of Keshek. It's coming over from Jordan, roaming around the map, already getting to the back of Bars. Farm economy. Not enough space for the TC to shelter everyone, so a bunch of villagers going down over here as well. Jordan's starting to get some momentum over here. He's got He's got skirmishers denying another castle bars! Cannot catch a break! Every castle is trying to go for. Last, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, it's come at a cost, and this one is not even coming up at all. There we are. Keshek's finally going down, doesn't matter. Most likely not. Jordan's still the one putting the most pressure. He's got the trebuchets booming on, marching on right now. Straight over to the next castle. He's got a beautiful heal advantage here to work with as well. Check this out. Oh. <laughs> there we go. He's got it now. Did he get the Siege Engineers? That seems unusually... Yeah, he got a... Um, Timurid Siege Craft, actually. Sorry. That seemed unusually big range for, for the trade ship. But yeah, Bars does not want to keep on holding over here anymore. And Jordan's going to get game number one. That was really well played. And the game kind of looked back and forth for, for a little bit over there. But Bars, for the lead that he had in economy earlier, wasn't able to keep up with Meditarian. And in the end, it's going to be one in favor of the GL player here to avenge doubt. Avenge against whom? Well, no idea, because Boris is not related to Nikov, but let's go through the achievements. Maybe maybe I could say that he's here to redeem the clan, right? Well, let's go through the achievements, and we'll see for military. A better KD, uh, better KD for Jordan, very close to 3-2. It's going to be an economy that's stronger for Jordan by a lot as well, and not too much to take a look at over here. Let's go back, and hopefully we are not falling behind too much. Game number two is here. It's going to take place on Hippopotamus. Bars is playing on the left-hand side with Lithuanians. Jordan is playing on the right-hand side with Dravidians. And we already have from the get-go a lot of aggression as Bars is bringing the villagers over. He's going to try and do build box. Jordan's villagers, probably. Could even talk about the civilizations. We already have some action over here in the villas. Coming over to wall the villagers from Jordan. So this is not something that is going to have a particularly large impact early on in the game. But eventually as Bars transitions over to the fuel age. Jordan can end up losing these villagers to a tower or to archers. Right? Something like that. 
So having the villagers trapped certainly not going to be a, a good thing for, for Jordan over there and Bars is getting away with this. I was gonna try to go and claim some resources, right? Well, Jordan is already collecting the second elephant very early on. He still has plenty of food in the first one. He's just making sure that Bars is not going to try and leave his resources. Meanwhile, back home, Bars is going to go and get the second elephant himself as well. It's kind of like Socotra in a sense, Juju. Yeah. Game is going to stabilize right now. Jordan's just trying to push the zebra. He's unable to do so. Yeah, there we go. So far, Bars has gotten away with it. Now a dog's coming up. He's gonna start collecting some fish. And a very creative map, I gotta admit. The way the resources have been laid out and terrain features over here have been laid out around the shape of a, of a, of a hippo is very interesting, right? Like we have... This could easily be a, an outline of, of wood, for instance, uh, uh, for instance, right? It could be a forest. And instead, we have water over here. The outside. Do you know who the script author is for this one by the way whistler are you still around the stream let me know have a question probably left though feel it's on the way for jordan oh you're still around have you continued scripted maps i remember you won for the RMS Cup 2, right? Mm, did you did you try scripting anything else afterwards? Or is that the, the first and only map? <laughs> well, I know it's not the first because you said that you started scripting like a very long time ago, right? When the, 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 the game first came out to mix results, but... I entered one for this tournament. And did it did it win? Did you make uh, one of these maps or, or not? Hey Reynold, welcome. Thanks, buddy, for the sub. I'm playing some Terra Cup. Okay, okay, see you later, Reynold. Didn't get selected. Ah, uh, I see, I see. Okay, there's going to be more map tournaments, of course, in the future. So, plenty of opportunities. Village is here for Jordan. We see an archer range on the way already. He's got the gold miners. Vars is taking a little bit longer, 40 seconds longer to get to the uh, next stage, right? But he is also the only player who has gone for water, so his economy is going to be stronger. Going up later means going up with a higher village account overall, going up with a stronger economy in Jordan. Raleigh could have gotten away with the villager kill over there, especially as the Manatana's upgrade was coming up if he blocked the villager, but. That's difficult, of course. Right hand side. We have a barracks from bars! The villagers from Jordan are not trapped anymore, I believe. Are they? I think they might actually still be trapped, though. Are they not? I think actually they are still trapped, aren't they? Yeah, they are. So so Jordan destroyed this palisade to come out. And then Bars went for this one right away. So we have eight villagers over there completely trapped. And Bars is going for the archers. This has been cooking for a while. This has been insane foresight from Bars. Going for the palisade trap over there. Expecting to make a play for archers, of course. Skirmishers on the way. Okay. Does he not have any gold miners? He, mm, yeah, okay. So he's getting pushed away from the gold. 
by the single archer from Jared. Well, that's kind of unfortunate. If he was able to go for archers, that'd be so much better. Now, skirmishes are going to take forever for him to take a single village down. Yeah, probably would like to see a, a tower come up for him, right? But he was forced into a defensive tower around here by Jordan. And Jordan's going for yet another tower this time. The summer run's going to be beyond the range of Bars Tower, but it's not. Yeah, it's not the best location for Jordan. He's only going to be able to deny about two tiles. So. A wood collection, not too much. Jordan's got the Navy production going right now. Might be able to get some of the fishing ships down if he does so. Ours is going to be left only one worker ahead and that's simply by virtue of Jordan's six rival right? he's stuck compared to Bars. Here we go. Beautiful. The fish ships are going down in the end then, but still. Sticking good. I see the end is coming out though. Oh, okay, there we go. So it's got the skirmishes going down south. He's going for archers though. He's still not gonna try and take on the villagers yet. What is the plan for Mr. Bars? Gonna try and take some of the four villagers, maybe? Well, the skirmishes, that's going to take forever once again. So he's gonna make use of the archers. Nice shot! Bang! From bars, the village goes down. Beautiful. It, it was always going to be risky to try and repair. Directly outside your enemy's dock, of course. He was squeezing lemons. Should have expected lemonade over there. Now, going for yet another tower on the left hand side, but Bars realized about this one right away because of the market. Yeah, and Jordan's got no idea the Bars knows of that villager. Very well, now going down. Do we have enough range over here? We don't have enough range. Uh, Bars right now does not have fletching. If he had fletching, he certainly would be able to take the village down over here right now. That tower is still not particularly threatening. On the right hand side, the skirmishes from Jordan are providing protection to the Lumberjacks. So far, Bars has been unable to get any damage done over here, right? So he trapped the villagers very early on. Jordan didn't let that stop him from sending extra villagers over to the wood. But now Bars is struggling to capitalize, he's struggling to collect kills. Left hand side, Jordan's going to take care of Bars' tower as well, and everything's looking good. Jordan's just fine, guys. Village count might be a little bit higher for uh, bars over here, once again, due to Jordan's idle TC time. But he's managed to stabilize just fine in bars. Bars gonna keep on trying to find some damage elsewhere. He was pushing villages away from the food down south. Now he's gotta fight the uh, military of Jordan. He's gonna try to do so. At the very least, he's going out to the action right away. Bars, if he plays his cards right. Could have gotten a much better trade over there, but Jordan got too close to the tower for Bars to feel comfortable about taking the, the engagement anymore. It's kind of over now. Jordan's going to go for yet another tower. And he keeps on going further and further back for the towers over here. There's not really going to be much of an issue until like uh, the wood gets 
eventually depleted, right? So that's that's kind of waste of resources for Jordan right now. Similarly to how these are waste of resources for bars early on. And it's going to take some time for him to be able to capitalize on it. Yeah, bars is not going for any extra units that I can see. Law lines. Still on four archers, five scouts. Might be able to get a villager down over here. He's not targeting one unit, unfortunately, which... Salts and the villagers just walking away, losing a little bit of HP, everyone, as opposed to one of the villagers, or two of the villagers going down. Yeah, and, and, and Jordan stabilized. Mind you, bars are still looking stronger for economy, and Jordan's kept on racking up more and more idle TC time. And this is very unlike Gamer Legion from Jordan over here, to be fair. But I'm pretty sure the boss is going to take it right. Any bit of advantage he can get access to, he's just going to squeeze every last juice drop out of it. Speaking. Yeah, I'm not really sure what boss is hoping for over here. The tower coming up, first off, Jordan's going to be aware of, and he's already got enough stone to go for a counter tower if he has to, so Boros is very unlikely to achieve much of anything over here, and then even if he was able to get the tower up, notice that this is about to get overchopped, so it's going to be open, and Jordan's just going to be able to walk away. He's not giving up, though, he's going for his own tower. Boros had a significant hit start in building time, but... Jordan's got significantly more villagers to work with. Yes. Now this is good though from Jordan. He's found exposed villagers. He was able to get one down. And interestingly enough, despite being the player with the most kind of exposed economy early on, now Jordan is getting a 7-1 KD ratio for economy against Bars. Bars kills Brazil a little bit over here, but it's not over, of course. Despite the seven villager law or eco losses that Boris has taken, he still finds himself ahead by eight workers. Between the fish and chips, between the extra villagers he's been able to train compared to Jordan, who still keeps on racking more and more idle TC time. This is kind of uh, offsetting for, for Jordan's damage, right? Everything that he's been able to do so far, it's just not, been, it's just not worked out at all. I think his boss doesn't know about the other TC time. Yeah, yeah, he, he's got no idea. But just naturally, he should be making a transition to the castle age significantly faster compared to Jordan's economy is just going to be stronger. That's just the way it is, right? So while he might not be aware of his current position, he's probably going to get an idea once he's the first player to get to the castle age by a big margin. Now this is not good though, and he's probably going to end up losing a few extra villages, that's one going down, and Jordan's being greedy over here, but why not be greedy when you have so many archers and he's going to try to get all the villages down, he's going to do it! All the villages crumble from bars over there, still finds himself five workers ahead of Jordan, who is going for a wheelbarrow right now and he's going to fall further behind of course. Now how many farms do we have for the GL player? It's got three farms only. That's not going to be a whole lot of uh, an advantage, right, from Wheelbarrow. It's 15 farms. That kind of compensate in a sense. Or for that not to have a negative impact on its economy early on. Before it pays off. And yeah, bars on the other hand still looking pretty sharp. Might not be the case for much longer though. There is a lot of exposed economy from bars over here. It's not only going to be the fishermen, but also it's going to be the lumberjacks and lumberjills. Although, Jordan is not aware of it. He's just walking away. But what is bars going for over here towards the tower? Towards where the archers are coming from? Just donating a few extra workers for Jordan, who's going to happily take these. 16 Nicolases for bars so far. 15 kills from Jordan. These villages must surely gone down to a wolf or something.
And the interesting thing actually is that we see the same situation the other way around. Jordan's killed. Um, actually, Jordan's lost three workers and Bars has killed two only. I'm not really sure what that's about. But yeah. Yeah, just like cleaning the, the scouts up over here. We have the spearmen in addition to the archers as well. So Jordan's push is still looking strong. And now he's bringing the villagers forward. Jordan takes the tower down from Bars, prevents an, uh, another tower from coming up. Isn't that taking a few extra villagers over here as well? And it's not going to be the end of it. It's got a lot of archers. He plays his cards right over here. He can definitely take the villagers down. And this is such a messy game. Somebody said yesterday, sometimes Hippopotamus plays like Socotra. And it seems like it's going to be the case, uh, even if the previous game was not... You know, on this map was not anywhere near as hectic as this one. This one is shaping out to be quite the killer game as Jordan has finally run into the exposed Lumberjacks. From Bars, he is taking a few villages down over here. Bars is bringing skirmishers over to defend himself. To push Jordan away from here, but he ended up taking a few losses over here anyway. Like KD is going to ramp up to 19. 20 actually, for Jordan. Or he kills. And it's not going to be the end of it as well. He's going to push the villagers away from the south as well. And everywhere you take a look at, everything's falling apart for Bars. And now he no longer holds the villager lead anymore. Too many eco losses in the last minute and a half or so from Bars. Will signify an incredible lead for Jordan, who not only... Smash catch up in work account, but now it's going to be the first player to go up to the castle as well. For sure. He's in the market a little bit. He's gonna go up. There we go. Once he gets to the castle age and gets crossman, barking arrow. Not really sure what the options will be for, for bars anymore. Yeah, actually I don't think bars is going to have access to wood anywhere around the center island, right? It's going to be all outside over here on the left hand side. And Jordan was already aware of this before. So, if he gets to Crossman and Bakinaro, he can actually go and, and try to get the raids going over there once again. He knows that there's going to be some economy from Bars. He knows, because he's got the vision over here, the Bars is not collecting wood from the center. So, it's kind of a no-brainer for sure. Now, even the fish chips are going down. I think this is going to be a Castle H GG. Jira's going to get to the Castle H with a higher work account compared to Bars. gonna see uh, the GG being called from boss I would assume so I don't think he's gonna have yeah the ability to come back in this game and he doesn't think so either so Jordan's gonna be up to Neil over here and this is up until this point anyway maybe the smoothest decider series for one of these players we'll see Let's take a look at the achievements then. One more time over here. What do we get for military? A better KD for Jordan. For the economy, we have a stronger economy for Jordan as well. Like everything. Uh, no matter how you slice it over here, it's going to favor the GL player, right? The villager Max Scout. The villagers lost. He lost three villagers throughout the game. Compared to 29 villagers from Bars, right? And that is without taking into account the fish and ships, which Bars and Devils and six off as well. And overall, very, very well played, Jordan. I was able to come back from a situation where I frankly thought Bars was going to, to dominate. Welcome everyone to Inch game number 3 in the series, Jordan up with a commanding 2 nil lead against Bars. He's going to be playing game number 3, which first off is going to take place on African Reed Beds. That's the name of this map. Jordan's gonna be playing with Gujaras. Bars is gonna be playing with Mongols. That means Jordan, first off. 
The Gujaras is going to have 20, 30, 40% higher or extra bonus damage from mounted units. And then in addition to that, we'll see for the Gujaras also. But he's got two berry bushes. Starting on the new TC. He's got the ability to garrison herdables inside the mills over here where he's going to get passive food income. And then on top of that, we'll see for the Gujaras also. But the team bonus that Elephant and uh, Camel type units, they get trained 25% faster. Bars, on the other hand, playing with Mongols, will get 40% faster working hunters. He's going to get 30% extra HP, unlike every Hassan and Step Lancer line units. In addition, 25% faster attacking cover the archers, and he also has for the team bonus two extra bonus. Line of sight, or two extra line of sight on scout units. So like Cavalry, Hussar, they're going to be affected by it. They're going to be a little bit easier to scout with. So far, it seems like Bars is going to be the one taking advantage of the Mongols to go up a little bit quicker compared to Jordan. This is actually very interesting, and it's not something that you're expecting to see. Um, to see that the water over here from Bars as well, because Mongols can be so much faster to the village as is just when playing full land that what we have seen on this map in the past is the mongols are going to kind of ignore the water at first and then just go up extremely quickly as they do and then go for water afterwards but right now he's managed to get a hit of work account because of going for water while still going up to the uh, fuel age a little bit faster compared to jordan in the end it's going to be practically the same time it's only a second and a half of difference but there is that so Chilling with Jaras, Bars with Mongols, yes sir. So the barracks on the way already for Jordan. He's gonna start going for scouts. If you wanted to go for archers, we would have seen already some villagers going over to the gold. Plus, it's going up on 20 population. Bars, on the other hand, he will try to make a play for archers. Interestingly enough, as the Mongols, you're usually expecting to see them go for scouts, right? But if he does end up going for archers over here, he adds a spearman into the mix. That'd be very difficult for Jordan to fight against until he gets a few range units himself. Most uh, definitely skirmishers, right? And right now, Jordan's gonna be kind of set and going for scouts. Have resources to go for uh, any archer ranges currently. Go, Mars. Yeah, he's getting some. Uh, some walls up, so it's going to be fine, and Jordan. Jordan's going after the villager with a camel scout. Yeah, and Bars is like, get out of here. <laughs> He's just going to take the, the hits and walk slowly back home. It's like, just like tickling. For the villager, like, this unit is not particularly strong, right? But here comes the spearman. The Fish ship might end up going down in the end. One extra hit, and that's going to be the end of it. And it is going to be the end of it. Now the Spearman's here, but the damage is already being done. Jordan. Again, the first fish ship over there is going to do a couple of damage to taking a villager down. At this early stage of the game, of course. And he's got his own fish and ships on the way right now as well. So he's going to be catching up slowly but surely. Right now, still about two workers behind be the case for much longer than this. We are. Nice. 
Jun's pressure is not really resulting in too many kills over here to speak up. I don't think he's even chunking too much HP off these villagers either, except for this one woman. Who was already hurt by, by the Camel Scout, right? So Jordan's not really achieving too much of anything right now. And Bars, Bars is going for the Counter Strike. Now, he's got the Archers for, but the Skirmishes from Jordan are already coming out. This is just a natural transition from Scouts into Skirmishers, which is going to take care of Spearmen. It's going to take care of Archers. It's going to take care of Bars right now. Seemingly, as Jordan's been able to stabilize back home, just fine. It's looking great. There we go. Beautiful. The fish ships are still going down, mind you. And good in the control from Jordan. He might actually end up taking this one down. That's very, very weak. And the spearman got completely baited by Jordan's camel. While the scouts, on the other hand, of course, being a, a little bit stronger as they are, they'll be taking care of the fish ships. And in the end, he managed to get yet another one. Uh, and he might actually end up taking both of these down as well. Now, Jordan back home has not been going for too many fishing trips himself. A quick walls coming in from bars, trapping the skirmishers. Will result in a few losses for Jordan, doesn't matter. Well, I think so. That's uh, a bunch of resources over here down the, uh, down the drain, right? That's going to be six resources pop. That's 5 units. That's going to be 300 resources down the drain, so long as these villagers take less than uh, 3 minutes from, uh, to take all of these units down, it's going to be fine. Otherwise, they probably would have been better off just collecting resources, but it's fine. Only one villager is going to be left over here, pushing the skirmishes away, and Jordan's just trying to get some idle villager time out of those. In the end, the spearman does end up taking care of all the scouts left. Meanwhile, Jordan back home. Now he's got to defend. That's going to be Bars the one to put the pressure up. He's got a scout, he's got the archers. He's going to try and break through. The walls might have been a little bit too extensive. For Jordan to defend them appropriately. But he's done a good job at the very least with a market foundation first. He's been able to defend that area and now Bars is not paying attention. So the house foundation is coming up and that is enough for Jordan to stay alive over here. To stay safe and Bars... Oh, Bars, he's got almost enough resources to click out to the castle agent. Jordan, not so much. Jordan, not so much. Now, this map is a very interesting one. We have seen this one already earlier today. And while we do have a bunch of action early on, it's going to extend very, very late into the game for sure. Hey, Dale. Hi, hi. Welcome back. How are you doing? Oh man, I'm just so much looking forward to, to March already. How many days do we have left? Two days? Three days? It's going to be uh, Wednesday, right? Nice, nice. So next weekend, we are already going to have a multi-platform stream. Anyway, yeah, it seems like bars. Bars is probably going to be just fine. Going out to the castle is significantly earlier compared to Jordan. He's massing a good amount of archers. He's been going for extra fishing ships also. So his economy is going to be stronger compared to Jordan's for sure. And well, should be, right? Jordan's also been going for a few extra units. Or at the very least, right now, the, the fishing ship count is kind of comparable. 
But yeah, Bard's getting the hit start to the Castle Lich. Means it's gonna be the first one with access to crossbows, blocking arrow. Jordan, on the other hand, it seems like he's waiting until he gets to the Castle Lich to drop a DC around here so that he can keep on collecting resources. Because he could very easily have made a play already for one of these wool lines. But that would kind of require some investment, right? And right now, he's got enough resources to go for one extra TC. Very soon enough, resources to go uh, for two extra TCs. And it seems like that's what he's waiting for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Notice. Oh. Oh, he is going for a Lumber Camp. Well, he's going to be in the in the castle. He can just delete this one, go for a TC instead. And then he'll have enough resources to go for two TCs right away. I don't know. Well, he's not going for it. Instead, we see Crossman blocking arrow. He's got the archers forward. Oh, and university on the way. All right. Bars on the other hand, has got the second and third TCs on the way. And there we go. We have crossbows for both these guys with the university coming out from Jordan. He should be going for ballistics for soon. He's going to be sticking to one TC. We saw this one. We saw this one before. It's a trap. It can be a trap. If you are going to stick to one TC, uh, you need to go for full push over here in Jordan's position because of the unit choice of his, uh, of his right? But it seems like he's going to add the second TC, which I like a lot better. Second TC, double archer range, archer production, or potentially even elephant archer production seems to be like it's going to be good. Then he can add a 4C church shop eventually when his economy allows for it, but yeah. Need to get the second TC, otherwise, he wouldn't need to go for a 4 seat workshop like basically right away. If not, well, the archer pressure is never strong enough. Down bars is reinforcing the walls in Jordan. Just gonna try to come in. The elephant archer looks scary, but it's not going to do much of anything against buildings, of course. The yurt! The yurt is going down really fast, though, compared to a house. It's significantly lower HP, so here comes Jordan. Bars got the TCs over the upper. He has got the extra houses coming up. Jordan's gotta be careful. Let's take a look at the range of the archers over here and the range of the TCs as well. There isn't really a whole lot of maneuvering space over here for Jordan, so it makes sense for him to get out of here. Jordan's now going to push bars away from this wall line. Should be able to anyway. Oh, he doesn't know about it. He does not realize about it. And this pressure is starting to dwindle a little bit. But he did add a 30 C, so he's not going to be falling behind too much in economy anymore anyway. But bars at this point has already been able to get a, an 11 worker lead over Jordan. If he's able to keep the TCs working all the time, then he's going to prevent Jordan from catching back up. One thing that I'm slightly concerned about for the blue player though, that is very very good for Bars, is the fact that he's already given up his hand, right? He's already revealed his hand. He knows Bars, that is, now that Jordan has made the choice for Elephant Archers. See? is going to be fine so long as Jordan's just using archer units, right? Which is why we needed the siege workshop forward, yes. Uh, this is fine that it took some time to come up. It's okay. Mostly because 
he was going for economy, right? And in military at the same time, he can only go for so many things at once. And going for the siege workshop a little bit later is fine, so long as he's got the economy to keep on producing the units. So let's take a look at this. That's a lot of skirmishers. 10 skirmishers over here, already for bars. Jordan is bringing the Shri Vansha Rider. Shri Vansha Riders. Over. I don't really get too much of anything done over here by the looks of it, though. Yeah, it's going down right away. And the push is kind of pulling apart in a sense. As he gets the siege workshop, he gets pushed away from here. In bars, he's getting a defensive castle up, which is going to be so much harder for Jordan to get any damage done when pushing from this angle. Beautiful. With the monks coming out now, bars had plenty of time to adapt to Jordan's push. And he's done so masterfully. Between the skirmishers, the monk play over here, boss got a perfect army composition against whatever Jordan's got to throw at him, including also the Shri Master Riders, of course, which won't want to engage against the monks, of course. So Bars is looking good over here. So this is going to be the first game that he's able to get for himself. Jordan for sure would like to, to prevent that, so we'll see. Oh, he's engaging against the monk so and he's going to take them all down. This does come with the cost of cheap conversions, mind you. Yeah, and the mango shots over there. Actually, they are helping quite a lot. And the Shivanshu Riders are still going to take the skirmishers down in the end. Now the Mangurai are still going to pose a threat. We have extra Shivanshu Riders coming out right now. Very important for Jordan to keep uh, sending the, the new ones for, right? So that the, the old ones have time to uh, recharge the agility. That was rocky, but Barras has really stabilized, and I hope he takes it. Wouldn't want to see him go 3-0 uh, down in a set. Yeah, and that's gotta have some, uh, you know, mindset implications. Like, morale is not going to be good if Barras finds himself down by 3 after the first 3 games. Being a best 7, that would open the possibility, yeah, for Jordan to get a clean sweep, right? But Bars is looking alright. He's going out to the Imperial Age significantly uh, faster compared to Jordan. Jordan, on the other hand, is going to try to get control of the left hand side. Gold. And Bars is going to try and get the castle up in front of his base on a hill. I don't really securing any extra goals, mind you. But this has been a fairly slow game. We are already 32 minutes into the game as the players are making a transition to the Imperial Age. Now, what I want to see, and this is not what I was going to say, though, Jordan's! Shri Vansha Riders getting so much damage against the villagers from bars. And that's gotta suck. If you're in the red player's position, you don't want to see your castle being denied so brutally. Yeah, I was going to say what I want to see over here from bars is try to get control of the right hand side one, right? Because he's getting to the Imperial Age. He's got a castle already up, so he can go for Troishes already if he wants to, although I'm not really sure he's aware of Jordan's castle. Probably not. And, uh, yeah, try to get control of the right-hand side castle because this has been a pretty slow game. We are 34 minutes into the game. How much gold is available to borrow still? This is the answer. He's got 580 gold left. 580 gold left for bars to work with. Before he completely runs out. Jordan, while well, he has already gotten a castle up on the left hand side, has over a thousand gold left back home. So he's looking very good. And now Bars, Bars is going for it. He realizes this is not the time. Oh god, he's going for it again. He's 
going for it again. Bars is gonna be the one. Trade. Goal control over here for the castle in the middle of nowhere. Like, what is this going to defend, really? Wood? He can get wood over here. I don't know, man. I'm not the biggest fan, honestly. At least there aren't castles on both sides. Yeah, well. Jones got into the Imperial Age right now. He's got a castle coming up at the center, and very soon he's gonna have enough resource to go for a, a third castle. You can try and guess where that one's going to be. Bars, on the other hand, has got nowhere near enough stone to go for a third castle yet. We have a lead tree launcher rider on the way for Jordan as well. Play Bard and Armor. Got to see him getting the light cover out at least, even more than just Mangalai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess the Shriam Shrider, he's going to need something other than just range units, right? But this is what I was fearing. The third castle is coming up for Jordan on the right hand side. And Bars has effectively run out of gold. Does Jordan have the tree is already? I don't think he does. I don't think he does. Uh, I'm going to take a look at the game really quickly. But I believe he doesn't. And... Oh, actually, he does. He does have Shatrias. He does. And he's got Conscription right now on the way as well, so that's going to be cheaper and faster producing units. Meanwhile, the Shivansha Riders are getting to the back right away. Of course, you're going to go to the weakest point, right? Yeah, and I just don't know, man. Bars was looking so good just a few minutes ago, but failing to capitalize on Jordan's absence around the right-hand side seems just too rough. Now... He's got 927 gold, and that's it, Sefini. That's all the gold he's going to have this game, so long as he's unable to get access to one of the sites, right? And the fishies, the fishies are swimming with the fishes right now. And the Shirancha Riders are getting a lot of damage done, still very effective at dodging. And holding on to the raids. Fantastic. Now let's see a transition to Pikeman for Bars. It's not good. It's it's just not, not good. It's not going to do much of anything for him. Jordan's got already Chakram Throwers coming out, which will completely chew the Pikeman and spit them out. Just a metal bit left. Yeah, Bars seems like he's uh, kind of falling apart over here, right? Generally, the other hand is about to get 200 population. One player bursting at the seams. The other player falling. The other player falling apart at the seams. Yeah. And the writing was on the wall. For as slow as the game was up until this point, the end was damn quick. Bars calls the GG over here, and Jordan. Jordan puts himself at a 3-0 lead against Pars. And once again, it cannot be good for, for Pars' morale over here to find himself behind already. Game number 3 by 3 points. And game number 4, he's going to be jumping in uh, with, you know, one foot already out, out of the tournament. All Jordan's got to do is take one more game out of four remaining maps. One game out of four remaining games. So what do we get for me, Terry? Better KD for Jordan, surprising no one. Stronger economy as well with 5,000 extra resources. More villagers produced throughout the game. Four bars, but more losses. He ended up losing 66, uh, 66 I think, workers. That is bars. Villagers, in any case, and Jordan. But losing only seven villagers, so let's go back. And if you're hoping for a longer series you better pray for bars to get a, a better game in game number four because it's so far been looking very dominant for jordan so game number four is here match point already now the situation bars was hoping to find himself in probably the situation jordan was 
uh, wishing to find himself in. And what do we get? We're gonna have Franks versus Burgundians. Now, let's uh, actually change the colors over here. So, Barca is going to be in the red color. We're gonna keep Jordan in the blue color. For the blue player, first off, playing with Franks over here means that he's gonna get uh, the farm upgrades for free. He's gonna have an addition to that 20% extra HP on cavalry units in the field age onwards. Besides that, Franks also get. 15% fast working foragers in addition to a 25% discount on castle as well for the team bonus. Team bonus is going to give Franks two extra line of sight and nine line units. Now we are trying to catch up over here, so we were going 2x. It seems that the game had already begun before we were able to jump into it, but we shouldn't be too far behind. Bars on the other hand, playing with Burgundians, is going to get access to eco upgrades one inch earlier for a 40% discount. He's going to have also. 50% discount on uh, stable upgrades with access to the Cavalier upgrade in the Castle Age as opposed to having to wait to the Imperial Age. He also will get 25% higher damage from Gunpowder units while for the team bonus, Relics will generate food in addition to gold at the same rate. Still trying to catch up over here. We shouldn't be taking much longer than this to catch up, I think, so it's going to be fine. And as a few ages here for both these guys, we're gonna see the sable come out for Jordan right away in bars. Bars is going for the sable right away as well, and I'm just getting excited by taking a look at the stables coming out because I know it's going to be an action packed fuel age. And I know that there's so much on the line over here for bars, he's gonna try his darnest to take the game from Jordan right. He's gonna win all four remaining games, and this is just the first step. There are no more extra chances for Bars. Jordan? Of course, he, he'll be delighted to <laughs> take the series over here with a clean sweep. Bars is going to try and make it impossible to do so. The scouts are coming over from Jordan. He's going to try to come in, but the wall's already up over there. He brings a few spearmen, Jordan, that is, and Bars got some defensive spearmen over there himself too and he's trying to get the walls up on the right hand side but Jordan's going over there and Bars is over here now we're gonna see an engagement take place a hill advantage is over here for Jordan as well we see the villagers trying to engage as well from Bars but it's not gonna be enough or is it? doesn't seem like it's going to be enough at all and in the end Jordan's gonna be the one walking away as defenses from Bars worked a little bit better than expected I think for Jordan over here in the end it's gonna be only one scout left mind you from Bars Jordan still has another scout coming over. Gonna try to take the village down. I think he might be able to do so. The spearmen are too far away, are they? I think the spearmen are too far away. One more hit and the villager's gotta be toast. He's not committing to the villager. He's sending the spearmen instead. And notice how Bars is going to sacrifice the scout in order to save the villager. Well done. Well played. Bars... Just right now, with the same idle TC time as Jordan, just right now, with the same work account, we should be able to finish getting the walls up. Bonjour. There we go. defense over here is good he has to pull a few villagers away from duty though well I mean not duty but he's got to pull the villagers away from work defend himself against a push from the German player he seems to be the first player to go up to the castle age or it seems like he's gonna be the first player to go up to the castle age Yeah. 
Here we go. We have two villagers exposed from bars and it's going to bring the spearman over to defend himself against this. Mind you though, the villager is still very low HP and even the skirmisher should be able to take the village down and he's going to. So, three out of four villagers arrived over here from bars. He'll still be on his way to the castle HP very soon, but Jordan is actually not really lagging behind too much. As a matter of fact, He's getting a hidden work account by about 4. 3 is going to be because of Wheelbarrow from Barros. The other one's going to be the villager that he lost. Jiren is going to have effective immediately a stronger economy at the very least. How many farms do we have over here? Uh, well, you know what? Actually, Barros' economy is going to be stronger compared to Jordan's now. So I guess never mind. There you are. Alright. So Jordan is going out to the Castle Leech at about the same time as Boris is going up. It's going to be only a two second delta between these guys. But Jordan seems to be the one most inclined to put the most pressure up, right? He's going for a forward tower. The thing about this, though, is Jordan, he does not need to play too safe over here. He can he can afford to take a few risks. He can afford it to be a, a little bit ruthless over here. He can go for full aggression, for instance, no extra TCs, no nothing, and just try a power move against Boss. After all, there are four games for Jordan to try stuff in. Even how well he's performed when playing, quote unquote, seriously, right? In games one through three, you could maybe uh, try something else over here. Try to go for full aggression. So he's got two villagers for, and he's got into the castle. Each. He can go for a four siege. He can go for a four siege workshop. Potentially. Okay. Nope. Just knights. Single stable though. Monastery. No extra TC for Jordan. Well, anyway, just because he can afford to play a little bit riskier over here to try to be more out of the box doesn't mean that he has to, right? And he can very well just end up playing a little bit safer anyway. Playing more meta, and he's going to go for it. He's got the second TC coming up, and he's just going to stick to, to one stable with the looks of it. Up in the north. See Bars going for a defensive castle to put a stop to Jordan's push. A monastery as well, so we'll see Kusie. For Mr. Jordan. For Mr. Bars, sorry. Mr. Jordan on the other hand. Yeah, just going to chill back home with the second TC very soon. They'll probably end up going for the third TC and just play for economy. He's collecting some stone right now as well, and because of the frank discount on castles, it shouldn't take too long before he gets enough to get a, a defensive castle up. Can Sejiro then do anything while with what's on the line? Yeah, I th the smartest thing would be to, to just try and play to the best of his ability, right? That means playing safer. Might as well do it. I think Burgundians get to the dream composition, they beat Franks. It's tough to get there, going for a cast first. Jordan is going to do the GL boom. He's got a third to see on the way, so there is something to that. Here we go.
Beautiful. Cassier coming out and Bars got the second TC finally on the way, Jordan. So Rudin starting to pull a, a nice villager lead for himself. Only six extra workers, five extra workers right now for Jordan. But of course, so long as he keeps at the very least one extra TC compared to Bars. Each minute that passes is going to be like a three higher lead for Jordan. Jordan of Arc matchup. <laughs> Sounds like this boats Bally for Jordan of Arc then. Oh boy. TC on the way now for Bars as well. 4 TC on the way for Jordan. He's gotta keep the lead. Now that he's got the same vision we have, obviously he doesn't know how many TCs Bars is on, right? Right now Bars is actually higher score compared to Jordan, but that's to be expected. Usually if you go for full economy, you're going to fall behind in, in score. You're going to get more score by getting kills. You're going to get a higher score by producing military as opposed to, to producing villagers and going for farms and whatnot, but yeah, he's probably he's probably expecting to be maybe ahead in an economy, right, Bars? Won't be able to go for the military that he's gone for so far and go for economy at the same time and still be ahead in a score like it's just too much. Yeah, Jordan will be right. These guys are experts at reading the score. There we go. Nice engagement is coming out right now with the Custier's first hit. Taking the villagers and the monks down. We're gonna see only one of the red units going down. And the knights. The knights are now taking a lot of extra damage over here as the Custier turned around. It's gotta be careful. And now we're gonna see another engagement once again. Sanctity is coming out for Bars, interestingly enough. He's got only monks coming out now, but he's going for it anyway. And Bars is trying to hold on to the hill over here, so these guys... We get 115 HP compared to the 120 that Jordan's Knights get. 9 attack compared to the 10 attack that Jordan's Knights get. 3 melee armor compared to the 4 that... Well, actually it's going to be 3 versus 3, right? Because right now both players are on scale bar the number. It's going to be the same 2 base armor for both these guys. And the difference lies on the charge attack. The Custier make use of it, or rather if Bars makes use of the, uh, the charge attack mechanic correctly, he should be able to get better engagements against the Knights, but it's not going to be something that he'll be able to uh, do easily, of course. He needs to keep an eye on his units, he needs to make sure that he tries to take advantage of the hill, he needs to make sure that he tries to, you know, land the hits, commit a little bit, and then disengage. The longer the, the engagement goes, then the, the more the, the charge mechanic wears off. Or wears out, rather. It's got the raid coming up right now, though, Jordan. He's got a 21 worker lead against Bars, so... He can't afford to lose a few units. He's got a little bit of a buffer. That's not to say that he should lose any units. Right. Yeah. 
It's going down and I can see you're gonna continue putting pressure up. Jordan's economy is still stronger compared to Pars. He's got more military units compared to Pars still. Seems like he's gonna be the first player to click after the Imperial Age as well compared to Pars. He's missing one building, but he's surely gonna be able to rush it, right? Yeah, he's got the resources right now and he's like, oh shit. <laughs> what does he go for? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The reaction from Jordan. He's going for a university with six villagers, and uh, this is he's getting the night. He'll still remain ahead by about four workers, so it's not a massive lead anymore. Bars is kind of catching up over here. Jordan is going out to the Imperial Age actually later compared to Bars. And the red player's gone for a second castle, which will double his Custier production. Jordan still retains the military population lead. You know what this is good for? This is a perfect opportunity. Let's see. It seems like Boris is just going to walk away with it. Is he going to try to raid with these Kuzier? He's waiting for the charge, right? Well, he's got the charge right now. Is he going to, towards the hill? Now he can turn around maybe and take the engagement. Ah, uh, he's gonna try. It's not going to be enough though. He's just gonna try and go for the raids once again. It's kind of awkward and kind of risky. Jordan should be able to come up uh, on top of this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Without charge, the Kusier, they, they just are not strong enough. We'll see that. Cass is coming out right now for both players at the center of the map, and this is a perfect opportunity for me to get myself some tea. Meanwhile, we'll see the engagement taking place right now. Actually, never mind the, uh, the tea. Let's take a look at this engagement. It's going to be one that we want to zoom in into. It's going in favor of Jordan, most likely, now that the castle came up, and he's got way more knights! Then Vars got Kutier over here. The villagers get pushed away from the doubt as the Lord smiles upon Jordan. It's going to be against, uh, it's going to be a smiles upon Vars actually. Yeah, we see some conversions coming out, right? But it seems to be a drop in the bucket. Jordan's got significantly more knights compared to Kutier over here, does he? Not so much anymore with the converted knights. Actually, bars get the lead of the engagement over there. So Jordan bails back. He's gonna have to wait for Cavalier. Bars. This is going for the Pikeman upgrade. He's gonna try to get the castle up once again. Jordan's bringing a, a freshly baked batch of knights. Ready for serving as he's going to take the engagement. Notice how he's splitting the army off into two groups. We send some of the units up in the north. He's going to try and take some of the villages down, but the castle's coming up no matter what. It's going to come up on a price, so it's still we see the Custier going down to the knights. And yeah, the villages have gone down to the knights, and in the end, the pikemen up over here did come in. It's a huge advantage for Bars, who was able to get a much better engagement over here if he weren't because of the pikemen. And now, how the beer for Bars even. Pretty sure Jordan will come out on top over there in that engagement, right? However, Jordan did have an advantage over here. The fact that he got the castle up earlier, even if he went up to the Imperial Age a little bit later, right? Means that he's going to be the first one with access to trebuchets. And how much so? Well, a full trebuchet ahead. If you take a look at the training percentage over here for both these trebs, Jordan is actually training the second trebuchet a little bit earlier than uh, the Bars was going for. For the first one himself. Now we have uh, additional traditions from Bar's pre-existing castles. Who's coming out on top, Will? It's certainly going to be Bar's. He it's going to take the castle down, right? Jordan, I don't think he cares about it too much. If you take a look at the amount of stone he's got, it's more than enough for him to go for extra castles. But this can be bad, though. Jordan's about to lose 800 resources right away. He does. To the cost of, like, what? One Custier only? That's good. He's gonna need a, a little bit more. That. Take on Jordan. And Jordan started to go for Hand Cannoneer. Hand Cannoneer is Franks. It's going to be faster than uh, throwing Axeman, right? 
in the sense that he doesn't need to wait for the castles. Uh, right now, he's got only one castle, and the second one's coming up. And he's got in Cavalier already. Bars, on the other hand, I don't think he's gone for Elite Cousier. So he's gonna be banking on just a Halvadir. Oh, he's got Elite! He's got Elite, so now Jordan needs to go for Paladin. He wants to fight the Custier over here. For the Halberdier, he already has a hand cannon here. Alright, now's the time. Tea time. There we go. Beautiful. Cousier will be taking care of these Cavalier. Meanwhile, Jordan doesn't have anywhere near enough resource to go for Path anymore. He's going for his own Halvadir. Halvadir and Hand Cannoneer. Well, Jordan gets all the upgrades for the half of the year, so that's good. Bars gets all the upgrades for the half of the year as well. Jordan needs to get the numbers up. Bars already got the 200 population, Jordan. And a castle up on the left hand side. That's gonna be the third castle right now. I kinda wonder if at this stage is it's worth it to go for for throwing axemen perhaps for Jordan. You don't have that emote? Yeah. <laughs> not uh not a currently, I don't. I don't have it. I could potentially add it though. I think there are more slots now available for, for BTTV. When I first started that in emotes, it was only 15 slots. Now I think it's gone up to 50, so we'll see. Of all the things that make the pop bark, <laughs> it was no important tea. Feels bad, man. Pop's not barking at. The colossal medieval war on the screen right now. Those how about here? There is C4 blood. They are going after the Trojan first, though. Is that going to be enough? I don't think that's going to be enough. Because he are taking the the how about here down pretty easily. Well, Jordan knows better not to go for that one once again. There we go. See, I'm starting to get to the back of Jordan's space right now on bars. Starting to pick up some momentum. He still has a higher population compared to Jordan, but he's got to be careful. It's not going to be necessarily the case in the next few minutes as Jordan's done a really good job defending himself. With the half of the year, the hand count on here, and Jordan. Jordan's going to call the GG though. Okay, okay. You know, population was overall. Pretty even, uh, even if Jordan was the one being raided over here and his economy was badly impacted by this. He could have kept on going for sure, but he doesn't want to, to delay this one too much. Bars. Bars is going to get game number four. For the first point, that's going to be three to one in favor of Jordan still and Bars. He needs to keep the streak though. He needs to get game after game after game for the three remaining ones. While well, Jordan, Jordan still got the possibility of. Qualifying to NAC4 by taking a single game from the three remaining ones. Given the you know track record between both these players so far in the series, it's looking pretty good for, for Jordan for sure still. Not impossible for bars, just very difficult. Almost 3 to 2k the ratio for bars. We're gonna see for economy, a stronger economy for Jordan. Society, looking better for Jordan as well. He did get the villager max count over here. He did produce the most villagers throughout the game, but he also took the most losses, so 72 villagers going down. Throughout the game for Jordan, compared to only 33 for Bars. 
23, sorry, for bars. And welcome everyone then to game uh, number five bars. Down against Jordan still by two points. Let's cross the actually let's uh change the color right here. Gonna keep bars in the red color just to keep consistency. We are going 2x until we completely catch up. We shouldn't be winning too much over here. I think they were only three minutes into the game or so. If you take into account the amount of spec delay usually. Include into the series, of course. That should be just a few minutes that we have to catch up for, so it's fine. So, Jordan might not be playing with Guts over here, but he's not gonna let that stop him from going for the same strat that Dal went for on this map. So, Asex for Jordan, Khmer for Bars, and Jordan's bringing the militia over, and it seems like Bars is not going to realize about this. There isn't anything special really about the militia from Asex. They aren't cheaper, they don't attack faster, right? They just, they, they, they train quicker, in any case, 11% faster. It's going to be about it, you need to wait until you get to the Imperial Age to go for Garland Wars and get extra attack, so I'm not really sure what the plan is over here, but it was almost able to get a villager down. Most fierce sad not seeing gods in this map, right? Well, see Jordan coming in now. He's got four militias, the Eagle Scout. One villager could potentially go down. Very good in control from Bars, mind you. He's trying to garrison the weak ones, and he's going to do it very well. Oh, and just in time, he was able to garrison the last weak one, but there is one that got trapped. Body block by the militia, so that's gonna be first blood, or actually first eco blood over here. You can barely see the villager vanishing behind the flag. And this is for some reason not working well. Sorry about that. Let's fix this. Yeah, you got it now. Yeah, and now the village disappear, right? Oh crap, it's actually not working. I'm really sure why what that is about. Sorry about it. Anyway. Forget about the Khmer Hop, not a bad counter to the Mega Drush. And it's worked pretty well for the most part, right? Um, except for the villager that died. Everything else is kind of fine. Actually, there is no pressure coming up from Bar Skins Jordan, though. And the villager difference over here seems to be somewhat consistent with the difference between uh, both players' ages and. The village that went down from bars. And now Jordan. Jordan's finally going up to the village. It was bound to happen, right? Bars got the archer range over the up. He's got the archers coming out, and he should be able to, if he plays his cards right, prevent the villagers from going down anymore and potentially take all the militias down, or at the very least keep them at bay. One village is dead versus six militia investments, fairly acceptable. Jordan still has some of the militia up. Could potentially make a play for men at arms afterwards. Although these are very weak, mind you. He's still ahead by about three workers. He's been getting a little bit of extra little TC time, more than necessary for sure. Here we go. Beautiful. Your 
The tower should be coming out for sure. Those archers are unlikely to get any kills over here. Plus Jordan's instant archer range drop over here. Yeah, it should allow him to defend himself just fine. I would like to contribute to the analysis of this matchup. Did you know that the Khmer Empire have amazingly sophisticated watering systems? One of their 30th, uh, 30th century artificial lakes is still visible from the International Space Station. I think so. I think I read about that. Isn't that like a like like an elevated city that they have with artificial lakes in it? I saw a picture uh, of something like that. I I don't know if it's part of what used to be the Khmer Empire, but I think it's around the area where um, man, the anchor, the anchor what is right? Is that is that correct? I think that's it, right? Yeah, I saw pictures of it, and I couldn't believe that it it was like modern day, and it's beautiful. There were like seven lakes or something built, or actually like like you had the walls containing the lakes. It was it was so nice to see. All right, makes sense. What's it called? I want to look it up. I don't remember. <laughs> Baila probably knows. This uh, lake city is just so so nice, so pretty. If you're watching this on YouTube as well, that's probably uh, something you might want to take a look at as well. Yeah, Bars is struggling right now. He's getting a lot of idle time. When going out to the when Jordan was going out to the fuelage, Bars was already on like 50 seconds of idle time, 46 seconds of idle time or so. That's gone up considerably since about 50 extra seconds. Jordan was able to get a hit significantly because of it. Two villages have gone down so far to Jordan's push. And now, Bars is losing all the four archers as well, so. Jordan's looking good. He's gonna try his luck again. This time around, he sends some scouts in. Archers, as well, for good measure, too. So far, it's not really been working out too much, right? Jordan, Jordan does need a barracks, though. He doesn't have one right now. At the very least, back home, the, the barracks is super forward, so he can go for the spearmen, so it's gonna take some time. Here we are. Beautiful. Bars so far unable to get any damage done with all the push, with all the pressure that he has been trying to get going over here. It's so far not really worked out too well for him. There we go. The quick walls from Jordan are going to keep him safe. The spear are going to keep him safe against the, the scout as well. Only one archer here for, for boss to try to fight the spear now. It's not going to be enough. And uh, Jordan should be able to defend just fine over here. But he's going to go for the counter strike though. Notice he's just chasing the archer down with spearman and he's going to take it. Five scouts left for Bars. There you are. Now Jordan's counter strikes looking a lot more threatening compared to Barsa's. Barlas's rather.
Can't really make it work yet, though. Yeah, the defensive tower from Boros is good. But Jordan will be the first player to go out to the Castle Age. I really hope there's not going to be a situation where uh, Jordan gets to the Castle Age significantly early and Boros calls a GG right there. I think given the importance of the current match, Boros is going to try until the bitter end. But right now, things are looking very good for Jordan. You know, it was bound to happen. There were four games left. There were pretty decent chances that Jordan was going to look better in at the very least one of those, right? Boss. Not particularly close from going up himself. If he uses the market, he's going for the market right now, right? So if he uses the market, he's going to get a little bit closer. He's got too much gold right now. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if he sells some of the wood, I think he actually does manage to go up to the castle right away. That is a lot of damage though, Jordan losing all the skirmishers to the scouts, getting pushed away the archers. By the skirmishers from Bars, and in the end, it's gonna be in the castle age, but it's not gonna have anything left from the fuel age. To upgrade, so he's making a transition to Eagles right now. He's gone for two additional barracks. Notice that he had the villagers just finished building the barracks over here and then go to the farm. So this is a kind of an adaptation from Jordan for the most part. I'm pretty sure he would have been happy to keep the units up and make a play for crossbows, but let's get into the castle right now. Bars has finally managed to click up, but Jordan's got a significant lead to it. Getting to the castle age is absolutely instrumental because without it, uh, eagles just take too long to train. And he's going for the eagle warrior upgrade and squires. Just gonna be good. He's gotta try and defend himself against the scouts. Uh, Bars is coming for forging. He's got seven scouts over here, I think. Yes. Oh, with the hero's knife falls short! As a matter of fact, where is the villager? I think she took almost no damage. Yeah, that was actually not too bad. Interestingly enough, Spear are gonna keep on chasing the scouts away, and Bars is going for double stable scout production so that he'll be able to upgrade these to light cavalry once he gets to the castle age, right? But Jordan. Yeah, Jordan's got eight Eagle Warriors, and he's pressing from three barracks. So good. For the most part, the Eagles were kind of chasing the scouts away, but he should be in a position to start putting some pressure right now as well. Or very soon, anyway. There you are. Here come the Eagles. Oh, and the quick walls are not coming up for Bars. At the very least, not on the wood lane, but they will come up around the TC. Second TC on the way for Bars right next to the secondary goal on the right-hand side. Will, at the very least, finish building. But one villager has already gone down to the Eagles, and that's not going to be the end of the push. As a matter of fact, Jordan has got still all three barracks producing Eagles. He's going to continue sending the units in. Going to stick around the TC for too long, but he's managed to idle. Good chunk of Bars' economy still. There we go. Well, Jordan's just keeping a, an eye on the gold miners over here. <laughs> Making sure that they still stay there, I guess. Yeah, but this has been unable to, to get too much damage down, right? Baron getting some some idle villager time out of bars. Yeah, now he's going to try to find a breakthrough. 18 Eagle Warriors. So far, 
The units are kind of out of position. Conversion coming in from Jordan. He's going to get away with the conversion. Nice. Monk is going down, of course, eventually. But yeah, the units have been kind of out of position for Jordan for the most part. Now he's finally getting some extra eagles back in. But this either kid's going to be enough. Already Bars has got, has managed to get enough defensive units out to fight a few eagles. If Jordan however had all his eagle army forward, his entire eagle army, then he should be in a much better position. But he's getting to the bullet once again! And he's gonna get the villager down! Oh! A little bit of a starter over there. But he does manage to get the other village. That's gonna be the eighth villager going down from far so far to Jordan's push. Here we go. See this is coming up on the left hand side. This is huge. This is huge. Because now he's not gonna need to keep the eagles over there and he can send the units forward, right? So we have the eagles coming in. Now Jordan's finally gonna start putting a little bit more pressure. He's got some pikemen. And the mix as well, which is so nice for him. There we go. Just gonna continue production as well. 30 C's coming up. Still triple. Barrack Eagle Production. So it was going down. How many do we have in total for bars though? I don't think I can actually afford to let this one go down. He's got only two though, he's got only two, one of these is going down, now his production is going to be significantly smaller and he's trying to make a play for monks. Monks against eagles, it's a risky endeavor. Maybe there could be conversions going over here. Still not going to take care of the fact that the pikemen will take the knights down. Obviously you wouldn't want to convert pikes, right? That's going to be kind of a waste of fate. But the gate... The raid's getting a lot stronger from bars, from uh, Jordan around bar space actually. Nine and a half hours into it guys, you're gonna have to forgive me for, for a, a few slips here and there. <laughs> a few slip ups here and there. Yeah, but the Eagles are finally getting the damage that we were expecting to see from them. As soon as Jordan got to the castle, now it's finally paying off. A lot of villagers going down, left, right and center, bars starting to crumble. As Jordan's push over here is looking so strong and it's not going to stop as well. Remember that he does still keep triple barrack production. He's got extra barracks coming up for as well so that he can reduce the walking time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Classic. Yep, yeah, and the GG's coming up from Bars! He says, have fun in Berlin! Jordan is gonna be the one then, with the final score of 4-1. to one. The final player to move on to NAC4, the last qualified player. Bars, he had a dream, but unfortunately, uh, too tough of an opponent to get past. So let's go through the achievements first. And let's go back and try to catch up to the interview. 21 to 20 kid ratio for bars. We're going to see for economy, a stronger economy for Jordan as well. Collecting about 6,000 extra resources. Society is going to favor uh, Jordan as well with not only the max villager count in the game, but also the fewest losses. He trained 76 villagers throughout the game. He lost a single one. Meanwhile, bars ended up 
uh, turning 79, so more villagers than Jordan, but he ended up taking 25 villager losses, so not quite as good. 